Mike and Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, that midweek show where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about everything going on in the world of open source. Open source, Linux, Penguins, Linux, more Linux, hangovers. I don't know. Pedro, <laughs> yes. do you have a hangover? Uh, no. Then again, I didn't drink that much. I think I had what, a, a cider. A cider? Uh, yeah, uh, on New Year's, well, last night. <laughs> Did you do the life hack? Or it was just a really big one. It was a half a liter one, so eh. it's a it's a reasonable one. Well, you know him, you love him. He's back and um, yes. he's joining us again. I'm called uh, the Burning Fool, according to the Lower Third. Hey, you're just gonna have to live with that, buddy. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> just gonna have to live with that, Jill. Uh, oh, what's going on? Yes. Since last week, oh. did you uh, get crunk over the weekend? Um, I. Uh, no, but I did. You had well, to think about I that, all right, trying to keep up that public <laughs> image. <laughs> I got a little tipsy, I think, because I did drink some uh, bubbly raspberry flavored and peach flavored uh, uh, champagne. And it was pretty good. I don't usually like champagne, but it was good. So that's why I did New Year's Eve. Right and, um, <laughs> and I got more penguins. For uh, <laughs> my, my penguin army behind me. What's going on with that one? That looks like a BDSM penguin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that looks like a latex Did thing. It come with a whip? <laughs> yeah. it's, actually, it's actually a little backpack, little purse backpack. And its name is Waddles. Waddles the penguin. <laughs> it's very cute. <laughs> it's so cute. That, that's yeah. truly, truly disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's gonna go over here with my rest we of my have collection. A too. Right. Yeah. Um, I didn't get into a whole lot. Um, if you've been thinking about buying a Amazon Fire HD 10, it might be a good one because, hey, Amazon, how's it going? I know you did your bootloader. I think, yeah, figured that out. Call me. Um, <laughs> stay tuned for uh, next week for an exciting episode of Vince Unlocked. Fire HD 10 or Vin's Brick Tablet. Hey. This is going to be an interesting <laughs> game. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get right into it. The state of desktop Linux in 2019. Because... Oh, it's another one of these. Hey. <laughs> quit being so negative, Pedro. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, it's like it, it was the last time I was on this show that if we talked about something like this, and here we are again. <laughs> this comes from that Lunduk boy. And where's this at? The Linux Journal. But this is going on, you know, Got a couple people together, but just before we get started, I think maybe in 2019 could be the year of realizing maybe the desktop, unfortunately, is a dying beast. <laughs> it, it's becoming more of a yeah. rarity. I know no one wants to hear that, but it's kind of the truth. Jill, yeah. what is this about? This is a couple of distributions. He interviewed a couple of people from different projects. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is a, a really, really good article. This is a, it's very thoughtful and insightful insightful article written by Brian Lunduke, and he did a very good job in asking some of the key questions pondering Linux today to the leaders of Debian, Fedora, and Elementary OS. So, and some of my favorite, one of my favorite questions was, what do you see as the single biggest challenge currently facing both your specific project and desktop Linux in general? And it was interesting because uh, two of them had said third-party apps, Mm -hmm. And the other one said proprietary uh, hardware. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the, and, the yeah. Um, who, what's his name? Uh, Matthew Miller from Matthew Fedora. Miller, and he's like, yeah, uh, yeah um, hardware lockout. You yeah. already have Apple locking That's... Linux installs out of their MacBooks. Exactly. So, it's like, oh, good on you, Fedora person. Everyone else went for the third party apps. Yeah. <laughs> Pedro, hard, it's to protect you, citizen. What is your problem? Obey. Clearly. <laughs> Don't use Lunix, kids. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we're talking with the Debian project. Who, who all was in here? Mm -hmm. Fedora, Debian, Elementary OS. I think yeah. there was a decided lack of canonical. Yes. <laughs> I'm guessing that it's Lunduke in... uh, tried. Vern, you're but they said yeah. for him. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. Um... <laughs> But it, I feel we do need to point out, I mean, love or hate Canonical, they are the 500-pound gorilla of desktop Linux. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, mean, the, it is yeah. the single most used distro out there. So, mm -hmm. hmm. yeah. Interesting article. Worth a read. Yeah. All this business is going to be in our show notes. But 
But talking about elementary OS, Pedro. Yeah. Oh, yes. So uh, Ars Technica <laughs> had a little bit of a foray. That's totally not a pun on the uh, lead developer on uh, elementary OS at all uh, uh, into elementary OS. And they say it's perhaps the world's best hope for mainstream. And immediately, right off the bat, I'm like, that's a bold claim there, Cotton. But then the, they start uh, yeah. they start going into it and they start explaining w why they make that claim. And I can see that, you know, Mac OS and Windows don't really give you that much in the way of customization. So a Linux distro that doesn't give you that much in the way of customization is probably the way to the mainstream. If you are to take, you know, what's already out there as an example. And then... Um, that kind of triggered mm. something in my head. It's like, okay, so you're making that claim, but that's you on top of your ivory tower taking a big old poop down to the mm. people down below who happen to like that choice, who happen to like that customization, who happen to like uh, everything else that Linux can offer that Windows and Mac do not. But then again... Uh, you have Chrome OS as an example, and they do bring that up in the article, which is, yeah, it's a Linux operating system that doesn't give you that much in the way of customization, and look at how popular it is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, they may have a point there. <laughs> yeah, um, well, elementary OS actually has gotten a lot of good press lately and has been introduced to a lot of new Linux users because of Jason Evangelo's well-written Forbes articles on his journey learning Linux. So mm -hmm. um, it's really gotten a lot of good press because it does have a very easy installer and very easy to use. And they've developed their own uh, desktop manager, Pantheon, which is loved for its Mac-like interface. So, you know, I, I can see the appeal of it, um, especially for new Linux users, definitely. But um, I would probably go, you know, just, just I usually just tell the, the new users to use, you know, Ubuntu or, or um, oh, Linux Mint. Um, just, don't, just, don't, yeah. Don't, don't, Ubuntu is good. That's yeah. a good introduction. Don't, don't, don't steer into yeah. Mint. <laughs> That's yeah. a whole thing. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with your undying hatred towards Mint. Yes. Uh, I mean, I did use Mint on uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly for a little bit there, and uh, I was not a happy camper with that one. So tell, yeah. tell me about um, your system crashing right before the show again. Uh, that was Firefox. Oh. I blame Firefox. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Not Solus, Firefox. <laughs> All right. En enough talking about easy Linux. Let's, let's go into hard mode. 100% Bedrock Linux Arthurin, oh. one of our beautiful party awesome. patrons and executive producer. Kick this in the show notes. And there's a new release out, Not 7.1. This is what, uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's something I like to call Roll Your Own Nightmare. It's kind of brilliant mm -hmm. because it gives you all the tools to really m just make a fuster cluck of things <laughs> for, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you have access <laughs> to Arch's AUR. Uh, you get the ability to automate compiling packages with Portage from Gentoo. Uh, mm -hmm. You have library compatibility with Ubuntu uh, and CentOS. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Now, now imagine, <laughs> yeah. Im imagine yourself in the shoes of someone running Bedrock Linux and wanting to file a bug report on something. How yes. are you going to convince the developer of that particular bit of software that it's not your fault? All right. This is yeah. very. You bring up a very valid point. <laughs> simply because where do. Because I would think if I, I was in charge of this project, I would just have email forwarders. I'm <laughs> like, okay, what keyword in here? Is this Fedora or something? All right, that goes to the Fedora team. Mm -hmm. How do you troubleshoot mm -hmm. this? And do you only install it on your enemies' boxes? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there you go. You have everything you need installed. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you anything yeah. else. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that. Wow. <laughs> you you got to think, though, for testing i i don't know would that even be good for testing though because mm -mm. if you want to test the worst case scenario sure yeah it, it's great for that uh i really <laughs> wouldn't use it for much of anything else because yeah no uh assuming you are you know good enough to even 
get something that works reliably out of this. Uh, <laughs> which is a big ask right off the bat. Yes. But assuming you're that good. Mm -hmm. you, you're yeah. just a loser. <laughs> you can't contribute anything because what the hell kind of base are you working off of? It's a moving target. It's kind of brutal. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the insanity of it. I fully support yes. that. Um, yeah. It does boil back to just set up a build environment. doesn't matter what distribution you run. I've always mm -hmm. said, you can give me Hannah Montana Linux. I'm going to rip it apart and I'm going to be fine. I'll, I'll find a way to survive. Learn to yeah. compile things on your own, kids. <laughs> or, you know, get Portage working on your distro of choice. Oh. Oh, right. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Chrome OS. It's kind of Linux, so we get to talk about it. Oh, yes. Well, it is very much based off of Gen 2, so meh, I guess that qualifies. Well, uh, if you've been uh, keeping up with the news when it comes to Chrome OS, chances are you've heard that there are now Linux apps in most of the Chromebooks that will ever have support for them already have them. There's just a couple of stragglers left. Even my um, old mm -hmm. Acer r11 right here supports chrome apps uh linux apps sorry uh so yeah it's uh most of the laptops or most of the chromebooks nowadays already have them at least the most widely used ones but there's a big issue with how the linux apps work which is they don't have access to the gpu intel integrated gpu as it may be but they can't use any type of hardware acceleration whatsoever and there's already GPU. been <laughs> it, it is an integrated yeah. gpu i guess <laughs> but yeah. it is uh it that's about to change because someone very special someone i had his name and i lost it zach reisner zach. um made a uh commit to enable um a gpu acceleration for vm tools which is basically the thing that runs the linux apps in uh what is it they call it vm but it, it, it it's just a glorified yeah, ch root yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. uh from there it's just a matter of uh if your particular chromebook happens to support it and uh, you can only test it if you're on the beta dev and canary branches so if you're using the stable branch no luck, no dice. So yeah, it's uh, it's something that I'm very much looking forward to because I want to see how Steam games work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and this is yeah, this is really you know having GPU support for containerized Linux apps in Chrome OS is so needed to increase speed and productivity just of using everyday applications, and the Chrome OS VM it really needs to catch up to Wine in terms of GPU support. I mean. <laughs> you know, wine, wine has that. It, it's yeah. it's already it's already been done. GPU support so for VM or um, yeah, ch uh, change root actually. A virtual yeah, a virtualized <laughs> environment. <laughs> environment. Sure. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know. I think one of the things we got to keep in mind: the Chromebook. I see Chrome OS is getting further and further away from its purpose. Productivity device. If you need a laptop, buy a laptop. I always think a Chromebook. It should be a glorified mm -hmm. web browser. Throw it in the Android apps, and I'm going to finish this sentence. Okay. okay. <laughs> this, this is, everything's, you need hardware acceleration. Your browser's hardware accelerated. This makes sense. All of your apps are going to be hardware accelerated. It's going to give you a smoother experience. So, yeah, this is needed. Another big update coming to Chrome OS that I'm really digging is they're going to be adding a feature that it will block your USB ports if your screen's locked. That's right. No yeah, more rubber ducky great. attacks. Yeah. No more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of brilliant. But yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, you'll be able to play games with your Chromebook, kind of 2D at 480p. Roguelikes. Roguelikes. <laughs> Roguelikes. Roguelikes. Everything. <laughs> Hardware accelerated net hack. Here we come. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, Yay. 420. Yeah, Linus. we got a we got a holiday present present from Li Linus. Linux kernel 4.20 has been released with lots of new updates, including support for the latest latest AMD Picasso and Raven 2 APUs, and yay, uh, more support for more sound cards, including the higher end Creative Sound Blaster Z 
times R and AE5 sound cards. And yes, those are the ones that are LED lit. So now those are compatible <laughs> with Linux. Now you can bling bling <laughs> your box with uh, <laughs> LED sound cards under Linux. <laughs> But you know, yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> there, when they introduced RGB to RAM, I questioned it. That one, I just go, why? <laughs> why? What do you gotta hate, yeah. man? Everything runs better with RGB. Um, <laughs> it's like racing stripes. It's racing fins, man, and stripes. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, no, the big one here, and of course... Yes. Uh, People were very aware of it. They got rid of spec. And spec uh -huh. was yeah. the uh, encryption thingy that the NSA released. And it was included into the Linux kernel. And people rightfully, in my opinion, uh, threw up a big old fuss. And it's been removed. Thankfully. Because in this day and age... What? L l listen, <laughs> A is it's for your own good citizen. Okay? <laughs> 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 and I for, I, for one, see nothing wrong with encryption designed by the NSA that the NSA absolutely refuses to answer questions about. What's the problem, uh -huh. guy? Yeah, no. See, after the Snowden leaks, everyone is not only justified to distrust the NSA, you're absolutely, objectively right to do so. So... Yeah, no. I, I, when it comes to <laughs> Alphabet or Alphabet agencies in the states of GHQ, um, I, I don't think the Snowden thing, everyone went, oh, oh, yeah, okay, the, the, those are shady organ. I, I don't think that was a bigger rebel. You know, mm. uh, it's like, yeah, of course they're doing that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now but we they just were have doing that. <laughs> yeah, they were doing that, and everyone kind of assumed they were doing that, you know, like kids experimenting with their sexuality everyone knows that they're doing that but you don't want to see them doing that do you <laughs> so what do we get um the amd picasso apu support is kind of big yeah mm -hmm. that's yeah. definitely of interest and yeah with mm -hmm. the zonar and e5 sound guards I'm like yeah all right i think i have one and of they also yeah, they also introduced support for the Pine64 LTS. There's a bunch yes. of banana and orange pie boards that are now properly supported. And and HDMI 2.0 support in Nuvo. <laughs> Good luck yeah, pushing that's... 60 FPS out of a <laughs> Nuvo-driven video card uh, at, uh, you know, UHD. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, wait. Good. Uh, uh, <laughs> what does Nuvo currently support up to? The 7 uh, series? Cap Mm -hmm. Plur, yeah, Kepler. Yeah, Kepler. So those do have a uh, display port uh, 2.1. This is HDMI 2.0. Uh, well, I'm trying <laughs> to think if they even push 4K, because you're not going to do that over... Eight, I don't think any of them have HDMI 2. So. Uh, no, mm. uh, although display port 1.4 has been out for a while, so there's probably bound yeah. to be, even if it's like the 780 Ti or something. Possibly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> EU bug bounties. This is good news. Oh yes. yes, this is awesome. EU to fund bug bounties for open source projects including Putty, Notepad Plus Plus, KeePass, FileZilla, and VLC, ranging from thirty thousand to hundred thousand dollars per bug. And this is a part of their free and open source software audit project, which is really really awesome because as we have talked about, and even last week. Um, in big business environments where the utmost security is needed, small independent developer code should not be used unless it is vetted and supported. And this is a great solution to that problem and encourages the community to help fix open source bugs and create vetted software. So, you know, that this is a, this is a great solution. Uh, bug bounties. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm all for <laughs> this. <laughs> And uh, if you have a look at uh, which companies uh, and the amount of money that they're offering for like the total bounties that you could possibly get, you have yeah. Putty and Drupal uh, heading the list with ninety thousand and eighty nine thousand dollars respectively. That's Yay. that's a lot of money. <laughs> so if you can find a bug that justifies a sizable uh, bounty reward, this this is just good news. If you are yeah. skilled and you need some extra monies. 
this is your thing right here. Also, for everyone else that's just uh, curious about what people find, just keep an eye on Integrity and uh, Hacker One for the results where everything will be posted. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, this is just good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bug bounties are awesome. Yay. I just want to draw more attention to the picture that TechSpot decided to yes. use because <laughs> we have the hoodie hacker. Hoodie hacker. A bank <laughs> robber from the 40s. <laughs> And an actual pirate. <laughs> an well, actual hang pirate on. with a golden laptop. Zorro pirate. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going on there, tech spot, but all right. Whatever. Whatever. Um, them's hackers. Yes. Good news, everyone. It's back from the dead. Um, yes. We're talking about Mozilla awesome. Labs, man. Projects focusing on virtual reality, speech and voice, and the internet IoT of things. Um. They're going to continue on everything, well, along with everything that is not a browser, which is good. They can play around with stuff. You're wondering, like, well, like, what kind of stuff? Think of it as, like, Mm -hmm. Google X with actual products. Yeah. Should be interesting Mm -hmm. to see. They're not, you know, this has existed before. It got nerfed, and, you know, they brought it back. They're going to leave the old site archived, and they got some new hotness for it. Are we excited about this? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, I think it's cool that the Firefox reality virtual virtual reality web browser is under the Mozilla Labs. VRML's back, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Vermal is back. <laughs> Vermal 2.0. <laughs> and actually, um, one of my favorite discontinued Mozilla Labs projects that I was following was the Gladius 3D game engine written entirely in JavaScript and designed to run in the browser. And um, that was an awesome project that I was following. And I actually knew one of the developers who was working on it. And the, the Cubic VR game engine is the basis for Gladius and Mozilla Labs WebGL projects. So, so even though you know, previously it was discontinued, um, that, that, all that code is still out there and being used. And it, it's, it's, they helped a lot in the development, of course, of WebGL. So this, this is huge, actually. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was a good thing yeah. that this bit of news came out because it's like, oh, they yeah. brought back Common Voice. It's like, okay, yeah. I can go back to submitting like ten or so lines cool. a day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's very good. And it's very important for projects like this to exist yeah. because yeah. not everything can turn into a functioning product, but sometimes bits and pieces of other things can turn into an amalgam that kind of hobbles in the corner and screams, "Kill me!" but is extremely useful. <laughs> Yes, yeah. and it it can help a completely different project actually have something to work off of. So it's yeah, yeah, it's just really really good. <laughs> good on you, Mozilla. Mm-hmm. Good on you. Yeah. Oh man, my favorite thing in the world to talk about, Pedro. <laughs> oh yes. god, I thought we were done with this. No, it's uh, uh, it's Popey. <laughs> Popey yes. has decided to inflict this upon us, and it's the top snaps in 2018 that were downloaded, of course, from the Snap Repo. And the um, number one is Spotify. I don't think there was any real question that I don't think these were like the top (laughs) download. This is just their favorite Linux applications. Yeah, (laughs) Uh, you say that, Mm -hmm. but But... if you scroll all the way down to uh, where is it? Number nine, you see Notepad Plus Plus. Yes, (laughs) Notepad Plus Plus. Have you people not heard of, I don't know, Genie? Get it? Yeah. Literally yeah. anything that isn't a Windows application that needs to be bundled with Wine into a snap in order to look yes. like it's something native. Even right. Nano with syntax You gotta help me out here, Pedro, because I said I don't think this is based on downloads, and your answer to that was Notepad++, plus plus, which I, I'm not uh. following. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> downloads for Linux applications was the end of your question there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no. This uh, Notepad plus plus is not a Linux application, uh, but mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, there are a couple of games and a couple of native Linux applications in there. Yes. Well, I mean, most of them. We got Spotify. Are... We're on Spotify. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. hell, Spotify, mm-hmm. Slack. That makes sense. VLC. I could see that. That's usually. One of the first yeah. things I get. Next cloud, that's a thing that exists. Android Studio. All right. Mm-hmm. Considering how many dependencies it has, yeah. yeah. I can see Discord <laughs> yeah. being in a snap. Plex, nah. yeah. Actually, Plex makes sense because that's better than going to Plex and having to add the app repo and all that nonsense. 
Synontic. <laughs> All right, that's in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> notepad, and shotcut. Which, Yay! Okay, shotcut's a yeah, thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, definitely. I, honestly, um, that's probably one of the best snaps that I've ever used. Was the shotcut uh, video editor snap? Is it because it's also um, what's wonderful about snaps is they are updated regularly. So even if you have an older system, you can still download the latest ver version of of uh, the software under Snap. And um, the Shotcut video editor, as uh, uh, you can ins install it, and it will find all your your uh, har external hard drives, uh, unlike uh, uh, the one we were talking about a couple weeks ago that <laughs> had issues with that, which I just spaced about on. a small on. problem. But yeah. on, this isn't... <laughs> We haven't talked about snaps completely unless Pedro's complained about that one thing that boggles me. It's mm -hmm. stupid. It's stupid, and I don't know why it's still a thing, and <laughs> yeah. it irks me to no end. It's, why would you have a <laughs> stupid little lowercase folder spawned right in the middle of your home directory just called snap? I don't know. <laughs> um, would you rather it be uppercase or like a mix match? <laughs> uh, how about it just starts with a capital S and goes on from there? <laughs> Hell, you, if it was yes. uppercase, I'd probably be better uh, or be more okay with it. <laughs> Capitalization in my home folder has caused me countless nights of uh, grief and distress. No, it hasn't. Um, well, I like to have a neat home folder. Man, my home folder's got dot files and sketch stuff I was like what is that i go exploring sometimes for fun <laughs> yeah i i know my dot files but and here's I the know thing Pedro, it's not files. like it's like <laughs> a3x04fd it, it's snap you know what it is you open it up it's logically laid out i'm not defending it i'm just saying it's never caused why, any grief why couldn't they just you know add a dot in front of it so it would be hidden by default all right i'd be yeah, okay with that's that that's a good idea fine if you yeah. if you want to know the truth <laughs> it's a practical joke we're playing on you that's just gotten a little out of hand, but it's still <laughs> bothering you, so we're going to keep on doing it. Aww. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you're also bothering a ton of other people in the Linux community, but hey! Are you trying Aww. to make me more happy? Um, <laughs> here's something I well, tried. I, I went to Snapcraft, yeah. right? And I'm yeah. like, okay, m maybe I'm going to try to install this. Whatever. I just picked an application. I clicked on it. I tried this in Chrome and it went wah wah. Nope, not going to happen. You know, XDG open. And I had the software mm -hmm. installer from Canonical. This is a stock 1804. And I tried it in Firefox. And it it, <laughs> it can't handle the snaps. With, with questionable <laughs> grammar, it says, don't know how to handle <laughs> snap. Dot, but for speed, was, that's what I was trying to get in. It, it just wouldn't work, which to its credit, to its credit. I mean, I would never use, not that I'm being a hipster. I just come from the old times. You know, if I'm going to install something, I'm just going to be snap whatever the command is. The command is listed right up, right under the button that doesn't work. Mm hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I always use cancel to run snap. So, you know, <laughs> snap run or snap start. I don't know. It's one of the app. first things I uninstall whenever I install yeah. Ubuntu nowadays. It's app port yeah. and snap. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think it's wonderful that Alan Pope and Martin Winpress have been working on Linux gaming snaps. That's, that's, it's really cool. And they've been working on other applications as well. And uh, such as uh, Trackmania Nations Forever, which is a lot of fun to play. Yep. So that's been really cool, too. And they've done a lot of really hard work on on snaps, and uh, it's getting better and better. So it's really cool. <laughs> mm. Yay, snaps! <laughs> so uh, how about we go from some snaps to I don't know a file manager? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is a new file manager called Polo. Polo has a very clean and modern user interface. Reminds me a bit of, well, almost every other modern <laughs> file manager available, such as Nautilus, Dolphin, Thunar, Kaja, etc. cetera. Um, but it does have support for cloud storage via Do Dropbox, Google Drive, Amazon Drive, and all the other popular cloud stor storage. Uh... Like Dolphin? Yes, go on. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, it's actually the cloud storage is very easy to set up. And... Um, 
The paid version includes the ability to write ISOs to flash drives, image optimization and adjustment tools, PDF editing tools, and video downloading via YouTube.dl. All of which I already do with external applications, which I link to in the file managers I already use, like MLFM2, PCManFM, and Thunar. So, yep, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, so. I, I get it. You can pay the <laughs> yeah. extra 10 for the advanced features so you don't have to have yeah. third party tools to do everything else. You just have everything in your um, file manager. Uh, I mean, you know, breaking the Unix philosophy aside of doing one thing and doing it well, uh, we've already moved way past that, even with stuff like Kaha. Light years. Or, yeah. <laughs> we've, we're well past that point. But, yeah, it's like, those aren't the features that you choose to charge 10 bucks for, yeah. because I didn't really feel compelled to pay it. I could just use those other tools. <laughs> yeah. And oh, by the way, I managed to get this running uh, in Solus. And if you want to have a look at the dev mm. list, there'll be a link in the show notes. <laughs> There's enough depths there to lose your dog in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a file manager. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have nothing for or against it. I'm like, that's a file manager. I rarely use a graphical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I, I'm thinking of use cases. Uh, okay. When you search for a file in, say, OBS that you want to load a specific file into that particular scene, that's working off of the uh, file manager. I, I was going to say, if I'm moving a lot of stuff, I'm like, no, I start at star that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a project. Maybe maybe that's your thing, though. Maybe you're looking for, like, an all-in-one. Like, I need a Swiss Army knife. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with supporting people who are making No, no, stuff. it's great. It's just that those specific features... I, I get what you're saying. Maybe that's not the sell for you. But then again, it could be the sell for somebody else, you know? Could be. <laughs> could yeah. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of support... Uh Oh, go oh. ahead, Jill. Go ahead. You got some Oh, notes. oh, I was, well, I was just going to say that it it's a very uh, beautiful file manager, actually. Uh, very, very clean and modern. And um, I, I can see the appeal of it. So <laughs> Unless you have a UTF-8 yeah. <laughs> locale set, like, say, Portuguese, that uses complex characters, uh... at which point it'll just mess anything that has an accent or a sedil or a tilde or anything, really. <laughs> Wait, oh, uh... my. That's a problem. <laughs> Does it have an issue with real Portuguese or Portugal Portuguese? Uh, uh, both. They both have accents and sedils and tildes and whatnots. He tried to make a joke. Swing and a miss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, if you want to support more horrible comedy just like that, you can head over to LinuxGameCast.com, tap that support button. We got a couple of ways. We got Patreon. That's our best way to do it. And we do need to thank some lovely, beautiful people this week, Joe. Yes, we do. Kim O has increased um, their pledge. And we have a new Patreon, Alexander. Awesome. Thank you so much. This is really, really cool. Yep. Yay. Kim, thank you so much. Yay. And Alexander is uh, the social <laughs> media manager for the Lutris project. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That yeah, is he goes, terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Design. Okay, let me rephrase. It's terrifying <laughs> to take on that responsibility of working with Matthew Command on as somebody who's yeah. worked with him for years. I love you. I, love I you think, uh, yeah, no, I think his uh, support comes solely from the fact, oh, good, I'm not the only one who has to deal with him. There you go. <laughs> yeah. is, um, we like throw you a couple extra things the Patreon subscriptions. You get some early access to our uncut feeds. You get your own custom RSS. We do a pre production show every Saturday. And it's in podcast format if you want to download it. There's also a video component to that. That's uh, where we talk about what's going on during the week. And you get access to our Discord. It's our super cool hidden club. That is a pretty, pretty rad community that uh, I've got a proud of that. Everybody's really chill and there's a hundred and something people. And uh, that'll give you access to live audio if you're stuck at work or you're supposed to be <laughs> working and you just want to listen. <laughs> you can do that. We got Amazon affiliate links. I want to thank everyone over the holidays. That was kind of surprising. It's like, hey, man, kicking that in. That was awesome. awesome. And the humble <laughs> and the wish list. But you got to pay an iron price. But if you pay that iron price, you can write something on this Aww. and I'll be contractually obligated to read it. But you're going to have to pay for that. I'm surprised somebody yes. hasn't used it for like a horrible ad. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, you reminded them now. So no, you see, this is yes. my, my problem. I think about how I would maliciously use tools that I'm giving other people. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, that's the sensible way to go about life, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm trying to be a good person. I'm working on a New Year's resolution. Anyway, time for a slice of pie. This way, and it is just the one slice, one twenty-four core slice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. It's oh, awesome. this this banana pie to launch a twenty-four core ARM server. So cool. Um, this is one that they were showing off. Thirty-two gigs of RAM. Um, it was running eighteen oh four LTS Mate desktop. Uh oh, a lot of love mm -hmm. there. But one of the interesting things with the board. SATA ports and support for NVMe, and they're, they're showing it off, you know, building the kernel, and that that's just <laughs> sexy right there. Unfortunately, we, yeah. you know, this Count is straight them. up server hardware, and I'm pretty sure it is going to be priced in the if you gotta ask uh, category. Yes. Yeah, I'm guessing just the bare bones board will be well into the five digits, but it's, uh, yeah, no, I am curious to see just how they will price it, because if it is something reasonable, which it won't be, uh, that's something that you can have around your place in a cupboard somewhere, not taking up a whole lot of power, and basically can handle any of the server tasks that you throw at it, ever. <laughs> because <Yeah>. 24 <laughs> ARM cores, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I kind of want that. <laughs> yeah. You know, imagine creating a Beowulf cluster with that. <laughs> with that yeah. having lots of... That would be awesome. <laughs> imagine creating and... a Beowulf cluster in 2019, you hipster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. First um, show of the year. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, well, 2019, they, they dinosaur. Did... <laughs> oh. They did use... Uh, to test it, They uh, for the testing, they tested uh, Tensor. Flow and Nextcloud running under Docker, Raspbian, and the robot operating system ROS framework. So that was that was really cool. I watched some of the the videos on that. <laughs> it was running pretty yeah. well. <laughs> I'm excited to see anything ARM based with NVMe. Like, okay, now you got my attention. And you're talking about something that you, when you're mm -hmm. looking at price performance per watt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's what that's it gets the thing. interesting. If you have it running in your place somewhere out of the way, it's not going to ridiculous, ridiculously increase your uh, bills like an Intel Xeon would or well, an AMD Threadripper. Listen, if you get 24, if you get <laughs> rack mount server hardware, you're not worried about power, all right? Fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Which get, is probably. You, you have that under priced. the desk to keep you feeling. Yeah. Warm. All right. Yeah. Yep. Like, well, 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 live with it. <laughs> hey, if you want to tell us what type of hardware you keep under your desk to keep your feet warm, how do they do that? <laughs> well, there's a very interesting way you can do that. And then there's the way that you just go to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button and you let us know. The latter being probably the best way, which is the way that we're guaranteed to see your message. Unless, of course, you're uh, our Patreon. Uh, uh, at that point, you can just always leave us a comment on Patreon and you will get priority over just about everyone else. Just make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy box. Haha, <laughs> thought I'd forgotten, <laughs> didn't you? Uh, <laughs> make sure to pick that one uh, and uh, we will be happy to feature your message right here, right now. Right. So... This week, we have uh, Emil. What yeah, does man. Emil ask, Van? Um, this is something Pedro, I'm guessing Pedro said. This, this was is the, awesome. uh, he writes in. This is just a quick thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing a yeah. review on Sysget. By the way, I have also, I have also have added the SIG suggestion. What is that, Pedro? I don't know. Yay! Okay. So, uh, when we were talking about Sysget a while back, mm. I mentioned that the command that you needed to run uh, was about three letters too long because you'd have to run Sysget install, Sysget removed. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I thought, and this maybe this is just me being insane, although apparently not, uh, yes. that, uh, mm -hmm. say, with just three letters... Three letters that don't really clash with anything else currently out there in the Linux world. There are possibly one or two bits of software that may run into some issue. But you could just do SYG, SIG install something, SIG remove yes. something, SIG mm -hmm. update. 
that that would be perfect. That was my argument back then, and apparently Emil, the developer for Sisket, has decided to take that suggestion on board. Yes. <laughs> That's so, so awesome. Emil, you're <laughs> awesome because Pedro is going to get so much mileage out of it. He probably yeah. had you already told Nori. I, probably, oh, it's I will have probably forgotten about it next week. Yeah, because you called your mom. <laughs> She's like, oh, check Because my out. brain is just gone now <laughs> you, yeah. you, you've made pedro very happy i'm sure yeah. <laughs> yes that you did <laughs> all right um last but not least tom i'm yeah. assuming that is actually your real name um yes <laughs> i would like to sync my ebooks reading progress between linux android ios all right why not and windows is there a cross-platform solution that anyone has tried with success thanks exclamation point I don't there's, know how to read. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know, I, there's got to be like... Yeah. Go ahead, Jill. <laughs> oh, oh, I have, I've only done this with my, my Kindle in the, in the Kindle apps, of course, which is proprietary. But I have used um, the ebook apps, but I've never, you know, never did a continuation from one platform to the next. <laughs> so I don't know what to yeah. do for that. <laughs> See, outside of something that... <sighs> work similar to Evernote but specifically for yeah. ebooks that allows you to keep everything and allows you to keep like a specific bookmark at a specific length down the uh, scroll bar on that page yeah. uh, you're probably out of luck there buddy Strider's yeah. chiming in with uh, Google Books <laughs> Google oh, Books well, that's yes. a good, there's a good there option you go. a driver yeah. extension right there also has a, an Android app Good luck finding it for iOS. The All my way. ebooks are PDF because I get them on Humble. Yeah, same here. That's it's either <laughs> so, PDF or Kindle for me. Yeah. Uh, sure. If anybody knows, write in. If you have a solution, yeah. I've never. Yeah, I never even considered this. <laughs> my no, reading, my reading these, what I say these <laughs> days, my reading probably for the last two decades is like tech manuals. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah, my reading nowadays tends to happen here. I go through a lot of uh, ebooks on the Chromebook mm -hmm. because it's got a touchscreen. But I could just flip it around and do the old. Uh... Okay, it's going to be complicated with the mic in the way. I, the only reason I'm waiting because there's a bunch of my drop. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could do the Aww, 180 flip, nice. and yeah, you could just have your books right there. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's the thing. That's going to do it for us. That's another show. That's awesome. We're going to bring some music, pull up some credits, and uh, mm -hmm. get out of here. But we'll see you next week, people. Thanks Boys. for being there. Yeah, nice. Yay! We love you, chat room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yay, look at that. <laughs> Yay, Pedro and with you. Oh, look at me. I can read. And the yeah. chill. <laughs> 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 Jill, now, now you're just kicking it. Yeah. Like, are you gonna make fun of it? There we go. Here's some more. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, all our wonderful chat room. <laughs> Yes, and I would like to extend a big thanks to uh, Mila, who uh, became a Patreon uh, while I was gone. I yes, saw that. Mila. You're yeah. very welcome uh, on the, uh, the the discords. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, definitely. 